Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Contreras. I am a member of Grove and a student under their care. And today I will be leading us through a time of prayer and contemplation for this Holy Week, looking specifically at Luke 23 verse 46. But I will begin reading at verse 44. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. One of the things we see when we read scripture is the depth of intimacy, the depth of a relationship that Jesus has with God the Father. The level of trust, that even in the darkness, in the wilderness, in the sadness, the confusion, Jesus continually places his life in the hands of the Father. He does these things because he knows the boundlessness of God's love, of God's faithfulness, his mercy, and his grace. Jesus lives faithfully to God in both life and in death. And we see a Jesus who is willingly giving his life, acceptingly, because he is following the path that God has laid out before him faithfully. And this faithfulness and trust is what Jesus points to and demonstrates throughout the Gospels, revealing the depth of God's love. And as I reflect on Christ on the cross, I envision him looking around and seeing those whose hearts are broken by what they see. The confusion in their eyes, the grief, the sorrow, the pain. Here is a man hanging. Here is a man who is innocent. Here is a man who is dying. And this is a man who they believe had come to save them. He was their Messiah. And then I envision the other people that are there those that are laughing, those that are just absently watching, those that are mocking, those that wield power as a weapon, as a tool of abuse, those who live in ignorance. Neither of these people, understanding the gravity of what they are witnessing, of what this moment means for all of them, and for some, they're witnessing the death of Jesus, and it is the death of their hope. And for others, the death of Jesus is the end of their aggravation or just something to watch. And I envision Jesus with his arms spread wide, with the physical marks of mockery, and abuse of power on his body with a crown of thorns laid upon his head with his feet nailed to the plank of wood. And I see him watching, seeing the reactions of all those that are around him, the taunting, the laughter, the confusion, and the weeping. And in the midst of his physical pain, in the midst of his carrying the burden of our sins, in the midst of his physical restraint, the reality of the importance of this moment, there's Jesus displaying compassion, love, forgiveness, grace, mercy, and faithfulness. It's Jesus who acts as an intercessor on our behalf and displays the love between the Son of God and the Father, a love that is poured out and bestowed to all who bear witness to who God is. Into your hands, I commit my spirit, Jesus says. This is a verse from Psalm 31. 
And Psalm 31 is a psalm of trust and uncertainty, a psalm of hope in God against and over all things, a psalm that declares God's faithfulness and mercy. And here, here and now listen to you verses 1 through 5 of Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my fortress. For the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set before me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. What does the image of Jesus on the cross tell you about who he is? For me, Jesus' life and death shows how it isn't about safety or security or fear. And it isn't about anger and it isn't about the unknown, but it is about God's love, the intimate relationship he invites us into his faithfulness, his mercy, and his grace in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of all things that feel uncertain. And as we approach the end of one season into the hope and beginning of another, I pray that we may be people whose words are displayed through the actions of our lives, whose hearts trust in our Lord even when we are frail, whose willingness to serve and please God outstands our own means and gains. I pray that we may be people of the cross, people whose life displays that Christ is working in us, people who walks in the light of the resurrected one. I pray that our longing for a deep, rich relationship with God be what moves us out to love one another to greater depths. And as I pray these things for us, I also pray on our behalf. Dear Lord, you have given all to us, and to you, Lord, we return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give us only your love and your grace, for that is enough for us. Amen. Son of God, the 
Darling of heaven crucified Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb Thank you for the cross, Lord Thank you for the price you paid Bearing all my sin and shame In love you came Gave amazing grace Thank you for this love, Lord Thank you for the nail-pierced hands Wash me in your cleansing flow Now all I know Your forgiveness and embrace Worthy is the Lamb Seated on the throne Crown you now with many crowns You reign victorious Worthy is the land